Hey what's up guys and welcome back to Anime King and today I'm going to be giving you part 8 of what if Naruto had Madara sealed inside of him at birth. Remember to get this one to 100 like as usual, share this all with your friends in your social media platform and also guys I post a brand new episode of what if Naruto was the demigod of fire over on Anime King 3 so go ahead check out that and enjoy guys. I also post a brand new episode of What If Naruto Was Stuck in the Apocalypse After the Chunin Exam So go ahead check out that over and making two guys And also I post a brand new movie about Naruto in the past over on anime print So go ahead check out that and enjoy guys And remember for new yes I indeed have three channels that I post what if on Every single day for you guys to enjoy So go ahead and smash that red subscribe button and become a part of the anime king family and thank you for all of your help and support and yeah, without further ado, you will just be jump right into this new episode begin now guys. So the last time we left off, it turns out that Shisui had a crush on Ayam, the 15 year old daughter of Toki Ichiraku. As both of them were the same age as Naruto was there as well, Naruto was being late to school because well, he had to make things reflect badly on his grades to make it seem like he was a slacker in school. So he had to reflect badly. As Ayam and Shisui start to play, a mother father role with Naruto. As Shisui ended up getting a kiss on the cheek from Ayam, as he bristled in excitement before he took Naruto and flashed off with him. Arriving to class, Naruto was real playing his role well, as Naruto was cutting back on acting like he knew nothing at all. Despite knowing all the answers, he pretended like he knew nothing. As for Hinata, things were getting real hard on her. Since she had disobeyed Ayashi, Hayashi had made her training extra brutal. Every single day he pushed her to the absolute limit, wearing out her body over and over. Neji was getting more and more upset that he was doing this to her. As the time went by Neji was getting madder and madder at Hayashi but the last time he tried to do anything he was put through excruciating pain. As Hayashi did not even back her my eye as he made him suffer with the mark on his forehead. As Hinata was once again put through hell. Every time Neji moved over towards her when the time came. She ended up passing out right in his arms just to show how exhausted and how dead tired she was. However, there was other news going on. As the Raikage had been assassinated by a man, that man was now an interest of the newly founded Akaske. Yaiko had gathered Kimimaru already as Kimimaru joined his side. As he was helping the child grow, Yaiko then proceeded to make his way towards the location, Itachi. And a other group of envoys were with him, that being the retired Kakashi and several others as well, as they were supposed to speak to the new Raikage on behalf of writing a truce with Kanoha. His name was Rezo, as things were. well, he was satisfied with his end. He was in love with someone. It was a daughter of the former Raikage. The man was a very brutal, harsh man. Rezo had made things worse for himself as he had. Well, the man had forbidden him from seeing his daughter, however he never gave up. And there was a, an attack, as she got killed in the attack, her own father, Rezo had spent every waking moment, making sure that he was ready, so when the time came he killed the Raikage, and he had turned himself in. Several people were not really upset by that, the former Raikage was a very horrible man. Rezo got a visitor though. It was none other than Yaiko as he come to be my visit. However, Rezo had control over something they call the Force. It has only been seen in Rezo. Without even moving any part of his body, Yaiko was thrown into the wall but 
He proceeded to show Razor that he was not the only one with power, as he lifted the man up and threw him violently into the wall as well, surprising Razor by the amount of power that this man possessed. However, despite that, he still did not join him. When the day came as all of them were outside, Itachi was shocked as he could swear that that was a guy that he had saw at the hidden ring faced off against Hanzo. However, Yaiko took options into his own hand as he kidnapped Rezo. The both of them had proceeded to fight as Yaiko showed him the power for God. Two years passed after that as Naruto was in class. As his teacher was doing something with his substitution, unaware that Naruto was probably the best in substitution even in Chunin and Jonin level. As Naruto had come a long way. However, he ended up tricking Mizuki as Mizuki thought that he punched Naruto so hard that he bust his face but Naruto had went to the roof. Mizuki was shocked as hell that Naruto had this sort of control. While that was going on, Yaiko sat with his new members. As they were talking about gathering more members, he also got Sasori to join him. Sasori who was outlawed by the Kazakage because of his human puppets. But before he left, he did a big screw you to the village by turning their own Kazakage into a puppet. As they spoke about several people, one of them being Kakizu, the immortal man, and one of them being Orchimaru. So with that, Yaiko gave them the order to go and find the members. As Yaiko and Conan were gonna gather members as well, but Conan wanted to go somewhere warm, not somewhere cold. Yaiko had ideas. Currently, they were living in Japan. The world was a very large place. There were several different cultures around the world where people fought with different weapons, different things that Yaiko wanted to control. But first, he had to control Japan, all of the ninjas here. Before he went after the modern world, you had people out there with different kind of weapons that were really powerful. But before he moved on to anything else, he had to conquer Japan. And he was going to take it over, controlling all the nations. That was his big plan. That would be his move. So yeah guys, basically let's play Toffee Guys game. Switch across the place for yourself. So we'll see we jump right into this brand new episode. Begin now guys. As Naruto laughed to himself after just substitute himself with a kunai that he placed on the roof. Wherever he went, he always placed a kunai somewhere that he could escape. His range of how far he could substitute had been gradually increasing. Shisui was really impressed how far he had come. As Naruto hopped up to his feet and smiled as he inhaled the fresh air. Hearing the gas of the people below him, he was assuming that his substitution had completed and they were now seeing the kunai in his place. That was his cue to leave. He could tell Aruka that he had faltered with his substitution and he became sick or something tomorrow. I suggest you go to the library and study history. The voice in his head said, as Naruto shrugged, he didn't really want to study right now. No, you must manage your time efficiently. Go study history. Why history, Naruto thought back disagreeing. I already know a lot. Ah, so you know a lot about history. Well then, name the third Mizukage. Naruto mind went blank. The third Mizukage? I don't know the other villages that well. Why do I have to, he said. The voice inside his head scoffed, causing Naruto to cross his arms. Those who do not know history are doomed to repeat it. Treat all knowledge like gold and silver and you are surely gonna benefit from it. Naruto groaned but he agreed with his inner voice. This would usually happen to him. His voice would ask a question if Naruto did not answer it correctly. He would have to spend most of his free time in the library studying all about the subject. As Naruto would study that day, and he would learn all of the Mizukage's names except for the third. According to Kanoha Library, the third Mizukage did not exist. There wasn't a single thing about him, which made no sense. Time skip. Land of Waterfall. Reizo shifted his dark shades up his face as he walked through a rather lit pathway. The light was rather annoying. He and his companion Kimimaru were currently on the way towards the village hidden in the waterfall, Taki. Rogan Akaski numbers with their kanji numbers on their backs and their rings. They wore no hats, there would be little need for them on their journey. They were currently on a single path surrounded by trees, which was all around them. As the beams of light came in and lit up the path, the air was clean and beautiful, something that he was missing after staying in the hidden rain for so long. Still, this mission was a pain. He was supposed to find some dangerous S-rank killer. That meant a serious fight was gonna have to happen. He hated fighting, but at least, he had Kimimaru here as well. The kid may only be 10 and Rezo might be much stronger than him, however, Kimimaru was still a S-rank ninja. 
He could only imagine how deadly he would become when he was fully grown. Kimimaru placed his hand behind his head as he looked around in wonder. This sure is beautiful, isn't it? He said out loud as he inhaled the scent around him. Rezo did not acknowledge the statement in any way except for a grunt. How do you know that we'll even find the place? Kimar said, trying to start a conversation with his partner. So far the trip had been really silent and he thought it wouldn't be bad to get to know another member a part of the Akaski besides Conan. I mean the place is basically famous for being the only hidden village that is still well hidden. The place has never been infiltrated before. Rezo shrugged not worried about that fact. Perhaps we'll be the first he said. Kimimar nodded he was getting somewhere that time Rezo actually spoke up. And why are we actually here? I mean Kakazu was basically banished from this place. Do you think he will visit once again or what? Rezo sighed as he shifted around so he could look at Kimimaru. Probably not. We're just here to find some info on the guy. That's it. Kimimar nodded. He had to start off something as before. It went dead silent again. As he subconsciously grew out his knuckle bones. Then an idea came to his mind. So um, what are your powers again? He said. Try to know more about Rezo. Wasn't it something like um, force? Said Kimimaru. Kimmar stopped talking as he was lifted in the air, like a hand was pulling the back of his shirt. He flailed his arms around trying to return to the ground but its efforts were meaningless. Force, Rezo said. Force and lightning are my two affinities. Kimimar nodded thoughtfully as he was amazed that Rezo wasn't even looking at him. So can you lift up anything, Kimmar said, floating beside Rezo. How do you do it without hand signs? Rezo yawned as Kimmar was dropped to the ground, however, he landed lightly. There are two basic four style moves that I use best. The first was using my hands and chakra to control the force around me. This time Rezo pointed his hand sideways at Kimimaru and suddenly Kimimaru realized all of his weight suddenly started to disappear until he was starting to float up in the air. This was different. At first he felt like a hand was holding him up but now he felt like he lost all of his weight. Using my chakra can control the gravitational force around a specific area. Rage dependent. This technique is quite difficult and require the use of one or both of my hands. Kimimaru was lightly dropped to the ground as he couldn't help but smile. That's really cool he said as he was basically flying. That means you can control gravity. That makes you basically invincible. Rezo smirked for the first time as Kimimaru's smile widened. Here check this out he said. You're gonna love this. Rezo stopped walking as he turned towards Kimimaru who stopped and looked at him. Suddenly Rezo held out his hand. With two fingers he poked Kimimaru right in the forehead. Kimimaru found himself floating backwards his feet hovering over the ground. As he started to spin in a circle hovering above the ground. At this Rezo started to laugh at Kimimaru's expense. Finding his flailing around. Rather entertaining. I've used my technique to alter the gravity around your body. As Kimimaru looked like he was swimming in the air. You basically weigh nothing right now. Try jumping. As Kimimaru extended his feet down towards the ground. The moment his feet touched the ground he pushed off as he was propelled straight up in the air like a missile. As he passed over the trees he was flying. Suddenly he felt a hand grab his ankle as he was pulled back down right beside Rezo. He poked Kimimaru in the forehead. This time Kimimaru collapsed down to the ground. His face pressed against it. Kimimaru tried to stand however he could only get to his knees as he felt like he was being held down by gigantic trees. I can also make the gravitational force around you much greater said Rezo. As he poked Kimimaru in the back, the gravity vanished as Kimimaru got to his feet but he was breathing heavily. That was pretty weird Kimimaru said. Rezo nodded. My second ability is a force, invention I created myself. Instead of using my hands to control the force around the person I use, hands I create. What? Kimimaru said confused. I create my own hands out of force, Rezo said. There are invisible arms and hands I can propel through the air and use to my will. Kimimaru's eyes widened. So that is why it felt like a hand was picking him up before. I can use my arms to do whatever I choose and I have mastered them to the point where I can use them without using hand signs. Really? Kimmar said. That's amazing. How much can you make and how far can you reach with them? Rezo nodded knowing that was a good question. I can make 7 at one time and I can extend them to around 50 meters. Any more than 7 arms at once I will lose my focus and they would disperse. Likewise, if I reach any longer than 50 meters, my chakra strength will weaken and they will unsolidify and disperse. Kimimaru tilted his head. What do you mean solidify? 
My arm force are naturally intangible, but I can solidify them at will within the range. Show me, say Kimaru. Rizo pointed to the ground as Kimaru looked down. Suddenly, two handprints, five fingers on each, appeared, like Rizo had pressed his hand down on the ground, making a handprint. And you can extend them to 50 meters. Wait a second. Can you use them to push yourself off the ground and like walk on them? Rezo nods as handprints appeared on the ground and moved towards him as he started to levitate. Here, I'm going to push a lot of chakra into them and you might be able to see them, he said. Suddenly, Kimar saw the two long tubes of chakra leading straight up to Rezo's back. On the ground, he saw the two arms holding Rezo up. As Rezo went back down as he started to walk, Kimimar following astonishment in his eyes. Whoa, that's so cool, like really cool. How strong are they, he asked. Rezo showed as he ripped that tree out of the ground as it was sent flying. Kimimar was speechless until his voice came back. That's so cool, do it again, he said. Rezo held out his arm though as Kimimar stopped talking. As the both of them heard a sound, a waterfall. I can hear a waterfall. We must be getting close. Be quiet, he said. Time skip. Kanoha. She saw his smile as he called out greetings to the ramen bar. As he sat down as Ayam came around, seeing that it was him, she leaned on the counter with a smile on her face. Hey, she's Wiccan, she said. As she looked around for a moment, noticing the absent of the blonde hair. Where's Nurutakan, she said, wondering where his little brother was, knowing that he would always come here to eat with Shisu in the morning. As she saw it, did not really know the answer. Not sure, he said. I'm guessing that he actually went to school on time this morning. Yo, Shisui turned as he saw Itachi, dressed in his envoy attire, minus the mask. Itachi, Shisui said. I thought you had work to do, being captain and all. Itachi shrugged as he picked up a nearby menu, his dark eyes, scanning through it. I get a day off. Sir Toby knew I've been doing a lot of work recently, so he gave me the day off. Shisui nodded, understanding. Ever since Itachi became the head captain, since Hatake retired. There was many different captains in the Anvu. There was the captain of the torch and interrogation. There was the captain of the search and retrieval squad. The captain of the defense squad. Cryptanalysis squad. Assassination and so on. Itachi was the captain of all of them. Each captain of individual squads had to report to him. Basically that placed him as one of the most influential positions in the village. Sure, the Anvus were created to protect the Hokage in the village. But the Anvus only swore loyalty to the head captain, which was now Itachi. This was identical to Root, another form of Anvu that only served loyalty to Donzo, their head captain. That meant that if Itachi ordered the Anvus to actually attack Konoha, they would listen to him. That is why the Hokage had to make sure that Itachi was completely loyal to Konoha. And that is why the head position of captain of Anvus was so hard to get. If the Hokage had the head of the Anvu on his side, then he had all Anvu on his side. Itachi always had to report to the Hokage, but the Hokage had to make sure that Itachi was always loyal to him. This was also similar to Fukaku and the military police. This put a lot of stress on Itachi because every squad had to report to him. He had to have an understanding of each squad so that he could report to the Hokage each time he would come home later and have less time to spend with his family. That's great, Shisui said, because there's something I really want to show you. Itachi also has something you want to show him as well. It's also been a real long time since they trained together. Ayong, can I have some green tea please, Itachi said. She jotted down on her notepad. And can I have... How about some sushi, Shisui said. Wonder if she would make some for him. She rolled her eyes, but she wrote it down anyways. Alright, I'll get it in a moment, she said. With that, she made her way behind the curtain. Itachi was the one that broke the ice. So, how's everything with Ayong going? As Shisui gave my confused stare on purpose, Itachi gave my look. Don't pretend like you don't know what I'm talking about. She used to be shook his head. I really don't. I mean, she's fine. She does the same thing like every day. She cooks food, goes on breaks, you know. Itachi sighs, he rolls his eyes. Have you made a move on her yet? She used to be almost fall off his stool hearing that. I mean, how long have you liked her? And you haven't even told her, Itachi said. As she used to be shook his arms in front of Itachi, waving them around like it would make Itachi forget everything. You got it all wrong, he said. Itachi simply rolled his eyes. Whatever, he said. Let's just finish this meal so you can show me what you want to show me. Time skip. At the hidden sound. A rather dark laboratory. As a sinister scientist was working on something. Jet black. Here, his eyes narrowed like a snake, pale face. 
this man was none other than the snake saw in himself. He turned as he lashed out his arm as a snake came from it. The white snake grabbed a tube and pulled it towards him. He took the tube and poured it into the one in front of him. As it started to emit black smoke, a smirk came on his lips. Perfect. He then took the tube in front of him as he poured it into a sealed container and corked it. He then walked over and stored it in one of the cabinets, smiling the entire time. His eyes then widened a bit before they narrowed, in a dangerous manner. Kabuto, he called out to his apprentice, there has been an intrusion in the base. Please send out whatever forces are necessary and kill this person immediately. A silver-haired teenager stepped out of the shadows, a hooded cloak concealing his face. Yes, Urchimaru-sama. With that, Kabuto disappeared. As Urchimaru wondered who could it possibly be that found his hideouts, who was searching for him anyway? Could it be Jarea? His long snake-like tongue came out of his mouth as he used his tongue to taste the air. What a powerful chakra. This had to be Jarea. Perhaps Kabuto would run away once he saw who it is. Orochimaru's size hideout had been discovered and by a powerful ninja, most likely Jarea. His safest option right now was to run away and destroy all the evidence here and seek out sanctuary at another hideout that he had. No matter, he already memorized his formula as he collects some of his personal belongings before walking out. Time skip. A wall opened up on a rock as Urchimaru walked through into the forest surrounding his hideout. He would detonate the entire place as soon as he was out of reach of the gigantic blasts. If Kabuto was smart enough, he would have met him out here already. Where was he? Suddenly, there was ruffling from the trees. And just like how, Urchimar wished Kabuto dropped to the forest floor. Though, not how he wished precisely. Kabuto was knocked unconscious. I see that you've taken my spy as your own. Urchimar narrowed his gaze dangerously. This wasn't Jare that found him. This was much worse. Sorcery of the Red Sand. Out of the forest trees, a tall red-haired man walked out, confident smile on his face. While he looked to be no older than 20, Orochimaru knew that he was probably double that age. But don't worry, I don't care about that spy anymore. Sorcery said completely relaxed, around someone like Orochimaru. Why have you trapped me without warning? And where's your battle puppet, Orochimaru said, ready to attack. Sorcery released a calming smile. I'm not here to fight Orochimaru, not at all. I have come here upon a request from my leader. Orochimaru thought immediately stop. Leader? I have joined an organization known as the Akaske. Why else would I be wearing such a robe? This organization is in need of captains, specifically S-ranks like you and me. The world is changing Urchimaru. The largest shinobi war is about to occur and it's time to question which side you're on. The shinobi villages are our leader. A war, Urchimaru said confused. Who was this leader Sosri was referring to? Our leader wished to bring peace to the land but land will not accept his peace unless he brings it through by force. That is why he needs us. Orochimaru snorted. I'm not going to work under someone ever again. I'm on my own now. Sosri shook his head. You don't understand. You and I have worked together in the past. You know how I work. Together you and I discovered the first steps to immortality. Our leader has promised us the right to be able to research again. He promised us power. We'll have the resources to continue our research where we left off. But just like myself, you'll have to seize power for yourself before you can truly understand what I mean. The power of a god. Orochimaru smirked laughing at Sasuke's foolishness. The power of a god. That's unlikely. I'll take my chances to work on my own. Suddenly a snake burst him under the ground. Right under Sasuke and wrapped him up in a bone crushing embrace. The snake then bit into Sasuke's neck as it injected venom into him. A special breed of snake that I've created, Urchimar said. Its poison will knock you unconscious in a matter of several seconds, and you will die under a minute. Something was off and it was frightening Urchimar greatly, as he could not figure it out. However, once the realization hit him, Sasuke's facial expression did not change one bit. From what Urchimar discovered from his test subjects, the pain should be excruciating, but Sasuke did not even flinch in the slightest. The snake then suddenly spat on before it collapsed, dead, causing Urchimaru's eyes to widen. Hmm, turns out my poison work faster than your snake, Sasuri said, as Urchimaru looked towards the bite mark. As he saw a purple venom, who's note of it? His snake venom was clear, not purple. How did Sasuri have poison in his neck? His blood? No, that wasn't possible. I see, Urchimaru said. 
So you actually went through with it. As Urchimar started to laugh. You really did it. That explained why you look like you haven't aged since we last met. Urchimar was about to retaliate until his vision became blurry and his hearing started to fade. The last image he saw was Saucer walking towards him, chuckling to himself. Time skip weeks later. The bell went off signaling that it was the end of the school day. As well as the end of week. As Naruto eyes scanned his familiar classmates, seeing the looks on their faces, Sasuke was busy waiting for him so they could go home together. Choji and Shikamaru were busy discussing whether they should watch Clouds or go to the barbecue restaurant. Ino was speaking to a bunch of girls about stopping by her parents' flower shop. As Shino was slipping out, Kiba was inviting kids over to his house. That pink haired girl was Shali, observing Ino's group talking together, but she was not invited to go along. All was normal until Naruto noticed the absence of something. Wait, where was Hinata? Hey, you guys want to come over to my house, Kiba asks, knocking Naruto out of his thoughts. Sasuke liked the idea, sure, I'll go, he said, as he glanced over towards Naruto. As Naruto eyes darted all over, sorry, I have something I gotta do, I gotta go, he said, as Kiba shrugged as he went over towards Shikamaru. Naruto went outside as he passed Shino, as he continued to go down the street. Eventually, he saw the brown hair as he rushed up towards her. He pulled her aside as her eyes went wide. Hinataheim said Naruto. He noticed that she seemed to be avoiding eye contact with him like she was caught with her hand in the cookie jar. What's going on? Not enough time to say goodbye to me anymore, said Naruto. As she stuttered with her words, trying to find an excuse. However, Naruto shook her shoulders. Hinata, he said. We're best friends, remember? Hinata sighed as she calmed down. Sorry, Naruto, can she said as she looked up towards him. It's fine, he said, removing his hands. Why did you leave so early? Do you want to hang out with me, said Naruto. We can go to the library or hang out at the monument. We haven't been to my old hideout in a while. Hinata smiled but she shook her head sadly. I have to go home, sorry, she said. Naruto faced sad and upset that he wouldn't be able to spend time with her. Really? Come on, he said. Remember when we were separated for so long? You used to love walking through Kanoha with me. Back then you were excited for a chance to leave the Hyper compound. She nodded, remembering that as well as she looked up almost eagerly into his blue eyes. I still do, I just can't. Hayashi Samo want me home early so we can train. Come on Hinata Chan, said Naruto. We haven't spent time together for a long time now. You're always training with that Baka Hayashi, said Naruto. Why can't we spend together today? Hinata visibly flinched at Naruto's use of the word Baka. However, she didn't seem convinced. I, I don't think that he would appreciate with me just leaving without saying anything, she said. That's fine, said Naruto. We can just go tell him now together. No, she said. Naruto had to take a step back. To how fiercely she answered his question. As she realized and blushed in embarrassment. S Sir Naruto Kan, she said. It's just, I don't think Haishisama would like for you, for us to, she trail off. Naruto thought hard for a moment. Why was she so quick to answer? What's wrong, said Naruto. As he had no idea the problem that Hinata knew about. We can just ask him nicely. If not, you can just sneak through the window once again. And we can meet up outside the compound. No, she said. You, you can't talk to Aishisama. Why, said Naruto, as he did not understand the problem. He had vague memories of when he first met the man. He had originally hated him for taking Hinata away. But that didn't matter much now because he was able to see her every day at school. Now that he thought about it, he was pretty sure that he pranked the man before. But it was like Hayashi. Would remember that, right? He doesn't like Uchiha, she said, trying to convince Naruto. But Naruto shrugged it off like it did not matter. I'm not a Uchiha by blood, he said, so I think he'll be fine. No, she said. He really doesn't like Uchiha. Or you, she said. Naruto paused as he finally got what she was saying. Hayashi did not like him. So he did remember the prank. How about you just don't tell him, said Naruto. How about we just leave now and check out the monument together? Hinata hesitated for a moment. She would love to spend time with Naruto right now, but would it be the right thing to do? Would it be worth Hayashi's anger when she returned? I... I don't think... Come on, Hinata, said Naruto. It will be fun, he said. Hinata sighed, but she nodded. Causing Naruto to cheer. She would have fun with Naruto now. And face consequences later, she thought to herself. Time skip. Unknown location. It was the same day as Reizo and Kimar appear in front of a small house. In a clearing. Reizo long dreadlocks, along with Kimar white hair blue. As the both of them stood there, this is it, said Rezo. The sunlight reflecting off his dark shades. I can feel his shocker. This guy has to be Kakazu. 
For the past few weeks they were searching for this man. Their search started talking where they learned that Kakazu Pass was a very interesting one. Apparently, many years ago, the elders had imprisoned him for betrayal after he had failed to kill the first Okage. Angry at his own village treating him like that, Kakazu escaped from the prison, stealing some sort of forbidden jutsu, which the current elders would not discuss. He ripped out the other elders' hearts that imprisoned him, and he fled the village. This guy was violent, Rezo assumed that much. They also learned that he had an interest in money, so they used that to track him down. And he was rather old as well. Raising his hand up, he knocked on the door. Silence met them. Nothing but silence. Kimimar couldn't help but worry a bit as he waited for an extran killer to answer the door. He glanced up to look towards Rezo, with his shades almost look rather bored. How could he possibly look so relaxed? Kimimar was on the verge of sprinting away. But then again, if he had the ability to rip trees out of the ground by merely looking at them, he would be much more relaxed as well. Rezo raised his hand to knock again and then door opened. A middle-aged man that was slightly taller than Rezo, pupless green eyes looked at them. Natural dark hair that fell down to his shoulders, sleeveless shirt and dark pants and sandals. As a mask was also on his face, lower face mask. His arms had deep stitches on it. What is it, Kakazu said, noticing the two men in front of his door. I presume that your name is Kakazu, said Rezo. The man nodded slowly. He was nowhere near to the age that they expected him to be, so Rezo had to ask. As Kakazu nodded, Nice. We're from an organization known as the Akaske. We have heard about your power in your past and our leader is interested in you. Kakazu raised the eyebrow in confusion. If this man knew about him, that meant he knew about his power. What type of ninja would knowingly confront him so relaxed? Hmm, Kakazu thought out loud. He assumed that this man was very powerful or very stupid. Tell me more about this organization. Rezo nodded, glad that he was interested. Akaski is a small organization in the Hidden Rain, founded by our leader. Right now our leader is recruiting members such as myself to become future captains of the Akaski. Only the cool part of this captainship is that each member must be S rank or higher and they must have left their village behind them. Kakazu raised the iron, a group of S rank together. For what purpose? Our leader wishes for peace. He is going to stop the wars of the land and for that he needs an army beneath him. The rain itself doesn't have that much talent so I think he's going to be recruiting from all over. From there he's going to take over the five great nations and station us as captain there. Kakazu chuckled at the plan but though to his surprise, Rezo smiled with him. Yeah, I know it sounds crazy. I didn't think that our leader could be in peace. I didn't think that such a thing was possible until I fought him. Now surprisingly enough I have no doubt that he can rule over all the villages. Kakazu stopped chuckling as Rezo smiled even wider. This is a chance for us powerful ninjas that don't wish to ally with our village anymore or that have been kicked out of our village. To finally come out of hiding and seek what we truly want. All of your dreams will be able to come through, through this organization. Kakazu narrowed his eyes down at Rezo, all of his dreams. After he was kicked out of Taki he realized that he needed money to survive in the real world. The world revolved around money. If he had enough of it, then he would surely be able to survive if he had enough money. His dream to be one day rich enough so he would never have to use his ninja skills ever again. Rich enough to purchase a mansion and live peacefully by himself. But if he joined this organization he would have an entire village underneath him. Think of all the money. Will I be paid Kakazu said as he was seriously considering the option. Rezo shrug I don't know. Our leader told me that before we can actually take over in the village, the hidden rain has to become its own great village. In order to do that he was going to send all the captains on missions out in the world, collecting enough money to make the hidden rain equal to the other great villages. That's a lot of money and he does make us pocket whatever money we need. Right now we have all of the hidden rain reserves feed in Akaske but he wants to make that grow. Kakazu Nadi that didn't sound like a bad idea. So these captains are different. Village members who have defected. Rezo nodded. I see. I'm judging by the color of your skin you have come from Kumo. What's your name? My name is Rezo. This was going easier than he planned. When Yaiko had first told him to speak to members, the first was to talk to them and the second was to knock them out and bring them back where Yaiko could talk to them. Either he convinced them or killed them. Kakazu eyes flashed when he heard Rezo's name. This man was most wanted throughout the entire nation. The bounty on his head was over 50 million dollars. 
If he captured him, he glanced towards the smaller boy. He probably had a bone to his head as well. In the blink of an eye, a kunai dropped in Kakazu's palm as he thrust towards Reizo's chest. Clash! Kakazu was shocked as something blocked his attack. Not by Reizo though. It was a white here boy. Damn, Reizo said. Now we have to fight. And everything will be awkward when he makes you join the organization. When we have to see each other again. Oh well, said Reizo. Both Reizo and Kimmar jumped away. Kakazu walked forward chuckling to himself. The jackpot of $50 million had walked right in front of his home. Today was his lucky day. Kimimar and Reizo nodded at each other. When they were coming here, they devised their own plan of fighting in case Kakazu attacked them. Reality itself seemed to ripple like a puddle around Reizo's hand as it was a sudden force. Kakazu's eyes widened as his entire world turned black and white when the reality force slammed into him. He immediately dropped to the ground as he felt like he was just spun a hundred times at high speeds. His hand clutched the earth tight as a colorless whirl spin around him. Like if he let go, he would be soared into the sky. He tried to raise his head as he watched Rezo walk towards him slowly. His mind was almost shaken and his eyes were unable to focus on the image of Rezo. It looked like there were at least 50 Rezo walking towards the images, flickering in and out. What was going on with his mind? He couldn't stand up, he couldn't even control himself. I'm surprised you didn't immediately pass out, Rezo said, as he stood up the fallen Kakazu, who was clutching his head. In Kakazu world, everything was colorless, and the voice of Rezo went through his mind like it was amplified. I use more chakra than Nestor and yet, you're still conscious. You must have a shitload of chakra. Kakazu started to curse as he tried his hardest to stood, but he could not. After struggling with all of his efforts, he collapsed face first unconscious. Kimimar looked at Rezo in shock. Rezo, what did you do? Did you use your forced arms, he asked. Rezo sent his invisible arms down and lift. Kakazu up. I send out a force wave that enter through his ears into his mind and destroy his equilibrium. He lost control of his body in the force wave, destroyed his concentration. Normally it knocks someone out right away unless they cover their body with chakra waves. Or if they have a natural lot of chakra, like this guy had. The more Rezo taught, the more Kimar respect him. I see, he said. Alright, he said. Let's report back to the leader. Meanwhile, Kanoha, it was Evelyn. Where's Hinata? Neji cocked his head in confusion as his father pulled him to the side. What do you mean, where's Hinata? Neji said not understanding fully. She should be training with Haichi Sam by now, right? He said she gave Neji a tired stare as his shoulders slouch. She's not here. He's been waiting for her arrival, but for some reason she has not shown up. When did you last saw her? Don't you usually walk with her after school? Neji cursed to himself he didn't need his father to explain what this meant. Hayashi did not appreciate with others, test his patience. Hinata knew this more than anyone else. What on earth would cause her to ditch her training? Who would cause her to ditch her training? Naruto. Neji is stout in a curse. This is definitely Naruto's doing. He's the only one that could convince Hinata to leave her daily training. He's the only one that could convince her to do something like this. Doesn't he know what Hayashi will do to her if she comes home late? Doesn't he care? His ashes sigh as he placed a hand on his son's shoulder. Be at peace, my son. Trying to add on more anger to this can do nothing but hurt us. Neji calmed down, but he was internally furious. Doesn't he know? Now Hinata will get hurt. Neji sama. He's Ashi sama. Both of them turned to see Takama, a member of the branch family. Hayashi sama is summoned off the clan to the dojo. His Ashi eyes widened in shock. The entire clan? To the main dojo? Takama nodded, motioning for them to follow. As the both of them follow him to the main dojo, Neji, look at me. As Neji glanced towards his father, Neji, promise me this. What father? Promise me, my son. Whatever happened tonight, you will not interfere. Neji looked at his father as he did not respond. Later that day, Hinata walked by herself as she hoped that she would get away with sneaking out. She understand completely that Hayashi would be furious with her and she would be brutally trained. However, it was worth it. Of course it was. She had spent her free time with Nurutagan, her best friend and she would give up anything just to do that. Just to see his bright and warm smile, something that she was denied in the Haiku compound. Just to hear his reassuring laugh. As she saw the two guards at the entrance, giving her a look. Were they upset? Why would they care if she come late? Hinata-sama, one of them said, please, follow us. Hinata was forced to follow as her mind started to fly. Her heart started to race. Where, where are you taking me, she said, trying to sound braver than she actually did. The other one turned towards her, there was nothing but sadness on his face. 
High as she saw and summoned you to the main dojo, and he wished for you to be brought there. Upon your return, you and the entire clan, Hinata came to a complete stop fear pulsing through her heart. The main training dojo? And the whole clan? W why she asks. As she caught up with them, she no longer tried to hide her fear that was pointless. But I know it was obvious her and the guards. She was afraid. She was very very afraid. He's quite upset with your expedition with the Uchiha, the first guard said. Hinata blood turned to ice. How did he know? Had Hayashi guessed that she escaped with Naruto? This was terrible. Hinata wished that she could walk forever however they arrived towards the main dojo which could hold the clan inside. As Hinata found the entire clan staring at her, but much worse was Hayashi. His gaze fixed on her. Come Hinata, he said. Not a sound could be heard. As Hinata was sure that all of them could hear her heart beat. As she stepped inside the lit dojo, Hinata, he said as he got up and towered over her. Would you like to explain to me and the entire clan what you were doing? When you decide to ignore my direct orders and leave the compound, unattended, Hinata felt everything around him start to fade until she could only see him and hear his voice. I... She couldn't stand here and stutter. She wasn't a babbling idiot, she was Naruto's friend. Naruto would never hesitate in a second to back her up and speak highly of her. He would never hesitate. I was with my friend, Naruto Uchiha, she said. Everyone had a shocked look on their face as she came out so easily about it. Why Hinata, he said. Why do you feel like you can so easily proclaim friendship with the Hayuga, most of all him? Why can you forsake the Hayuga so easily? She would never understand why the two clan hate each other so much. Because he's my friend. She shouted out back at him, hurling the gasp of everyone inside. He's my best friend before I met the Hayuga and he still is. He's treated me a lot better than how I'm treated here and he's not even my family. That is why I don't hesitate to support him when you ask me. And that is why I do hesitate to support the Hayuga when you ask. Hinata could have walked up and slapped him across the face. And he wouldn't be angrier than now. After he heard what she said. Are you certain of your beliefs? Are you certain that you think your loyalty lie with that Uchiha? I have been in this clan for years now she said. And I have not been told what the Uchiha's have done to earn such hatred. If it's just because of some clan rivalry then it's time that we grew up. The Uchiha had treated me nicer than the Hayuga, Naruto especially. I am not a Hayuga, I do not have the Byakugan and I never will. So why? Why would I respect a clan that abuse me than the one that treat me nicely? Do you remember the last time you left with him unattended? Do you remember when the assassins tried to capture you? If it wasn't for your ignorance, and if you did follow my orders, that would have never happened. It's a shame that they had managed to kill him. Perhaps then I would have forgiven you. Hinata got angry. And do you remember how I managed to live that night? Not because of my weak Jayuga that I cannot use. It's because he saved me. He risked his life to save me. Not from my last name but because of who I am. As everyone stared at them. Hayashi put his weight on his back foot as he formed a stance. Form your stance. If you think that your loyalty lies in the Uchiha. Then I failed as a leader to destroy ever. One of those false thoughts in your brain. This night will be the last night you think about the Uchiha's again. You will fight in front of the clan until you beg for forgiveness for your wrongdoings. You will fight for your honor. With that he charged at her as he started strike her with full power blows. As Hinata tried to dodge as best as she could, she had no time to attack. She knew if she faltered just once, it would be over. Strike me back! Hayashi shouted as she continued to avoid his attacks. Show me all your feelings of the Uchiha so I can destroy them. Hinata jumped back, her breath hard, her shoulders heavy. She took a second look at all the people watching her. What a disgusting clan. Not a single one of them showed any emotion in their face. None of them seemed to care that a 9 year old is about to be knocked down by. Their leader right in front of them. As she now understood how Naruto felt. When he was getting beaten up and no one would help him back then in the orphanage. However unlike there, she could not do anything about this. If she left. She would be betraying the clan and running away, and betraying Konoha as well and Hokage would forbid her from becoming a ninja. That was fine with her but she wanted to be a ninja with Naruto. She didn't want to abandon his dream. No matter what he went through at the orphanage he did not run away. He stuck through it. Her eyes then fell upon Neji. As she saw his face was different. While he tried to act cold and cool all the time she knew that he actually had a heartbeat. As he was extremely stressed watching the fight he would gladly switch places with her. She gave him a weak smile of appreciation before she dove back into the fight. 
trying her best, she strike at all of his pressure points or a nerve point. Hayashi did not allow anyone for Blue to land as he saw where she was attacking. He grabbed her wrist and twisted and threw her as she cried out in pain. Good, he said. Stand once more and give it your all, it's time. I destroy all of your Uchiha confidence. He let a charge at him but this time he did not put on any show. He smacked her hand away and punched her in the guts. No Jayugen was used as she collapsed onto the ground breathless. Stand, he said. She got to her feet and charged, same as before, he smacked her away. Stand, he said. She forcefully got to her feet as she actually smiled. Naruto would not give up now and she would not give up either. Naruto saved her life the day the assassins came for her. He had the options of handing her over and saving his own life but no, he threw his life in front of hers and she would do the same for him. She would not forsake his name in front of the Hayugas when he never forsake her name in front of Kumo ninjas. It was a pointless battle but she would show them that. It didn't matter what her name was. She would fight until she was knocked out. She would never forsake Naruto, never. He strike her down once again but her smile never falter. I know she said. I know you're trying to make me beg for forgiveness. To make me forsake Naruto in front of everyone. But it won't happen. I'll never beg you for forgiveness. Not when I know that being friends with Naruto is the right thing to do. Hayashi shook his head. That's a shame then. It's a shame you lie to yourself in such a way then. There's a limit. And the pain will reach a limit. And you will beg. You will beg for my forgiveness. Hayashi moved and punched her across the face as she fell to the ground. Stand, he said. She got back up as she was kicked away. He then grabbed her by the shirt as he forced her on her feet. He punched her in the stomach as she crashed into the ground. As blood came from her mouth but she still smiled. It's truly a shame that you discover your inner courage this night, said Hayashi. He brought his hand up in the ear and she did not need a biakan to tell. It was covered in chakra. She smiled to herself she did it. She defended Naruto till the end, in front of the entire clan. He would be so proud of her as she closed her eyes. It didn't matter how hard they tried to make her hate Naruto she would never give in. Smack! She felt nothing as she opened her eyes. Neji stood above her blocking the strike with his own hand. The look of rage in his eyes was shocking but Neji had a look of rage in his eyes as well. Not looking away. Neji pushed him backwards away from both of them. The entire clan started to murmur amongst themselves but Neji could not care less. Why are you all just watching this? Am I the only one finding it difficult that this man is nearly trying to kill Hinata? Am I the only one with a heart he yelled at them? No, Hayashi said as they all turned towards him. But you're the only one out of place here. And you will be punished for it severely. It seems like you have forgotten the punishment of such behaviors. And today, you will pay for it dearly. Learn respect. Activate, he said as he brought his hand up. Neji screamed as he dropped to the ground, gripping at his forehead. Hinata eyes widen in fear. As she looked as tears start to leave her eyes as she watched Neji groan and twist on the ground. Listen everyone, this is what happened when you disobey the rules. Learn from his pain, learn from his smack. Hisashi had appeared right in front of Hayashi and back, slap him as hard as he could as Hayashi flew right into the doors. As Neji stopped screaming as the jutsu was deactivated. I don't care about the rules, Hisashi said. If you ever use the mark on my son in front of me again, I'll kill you, said Hisashi. His Ashi released a deadly amount of chakra. All of his killer intent aimed towards his brother. Such treachery. I feel ashamed to be a high god today, said Hayashi, his voice heard by everyone in the room. As the why, our clan seem to think so highly of our vision and yet we are ignorant to see. Your own ignorance. Do you honestly think when she formed her own Senju clan again, would she want anything to do with the Hayoga clan after all you put her through? I wouldn't be surprised if her first act of independence into a lie with the Uchiyas. Do you think that abusing her would make her like us? You are a fool. And if her father was alive, he would have spat upon you. Very well, today brother, you are forsaking our clan and I will not allow you to beg for mercy. Activate, Hayashi said. His ashy collapsed to the ground screaming, his howls of agony spreading through the room. By now Neji had got to his feet as he wondered what happened. As he saw his father screaming, he rushed to his side. No, stop this, please, he begged. However, Hayashi did not stop as he kept on pumping more and more and more and more until his ashi went quiet. As his body lay there, motionlessly, in front of Neji, Neji eyes widened in shock as his father marked 
was still activated yet he did not move or said anything. Suddenly, the X on, his ashy head vanished. Neji started to tremble, tears started to leak from his eyes. No, 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 no! Hayashi hardened eyes then suddenly got soft. As the image of his brother's body stood there as it penetrated through all that anger, all that rage, all that pride as he realized he just killed his own brother. This meeting is over, he shouted as he left. As Neji stood there not wanting to believe it, this couldn't be happening. His father, no, no, he thought to himself as he stood there. Neji started to cry as tears started to fall onto his father's dead body. As the members started to leave the room. Why are you all leaving? He yelled. His tearful eyes looked at the members of the branch and the main family. Why are you leaving him? That man, he killed my father. Help me. He killed my father. Do something, he yelled at them. However, they just left. Eventually, two branch members walked over and picked up the body, carrying it away from Neji. As Neji lied there and screamed, the entire scene played out right in front of Hinata, who stood there horrified. Later that night, Neji slammed the door open into the branch, family main room where all of them were talking about what happened. All they saw in Neji's eyes was anger, unfiltered rage. I've had it, he said as all of them focused on him. His eyes were staying red. I've had it with this clan and its bullshit ideals. My father was just murdered in the most painfulest way possible right in front of my eyes. In front of all of our eyes. How can we let this day go on forgotten? Or are we just going to continue on with our branch life? I won't. I'm not going to forget what he did to my family. I'm not going to forget what the main branch has done to hurt me. Neji, one of the older branch members spoke out. No one will forget what happened to his Ashi this night. He was very close and special to all of us. Good. Because it's time that we do something about it. What do you mean? It's time the Hyuga clan is not split into two families. It's time it became only one. With the branch family. The entire room gasped. That family killed my father. It has enslaved us for too long. Who here doesn't hate the way the Hyuga clan works? This clan is a disgrace to Kanoha It's time. We start a new way with the Hyuga he said. Neji. Watch what you say, another member said, if they hear you talk about such things. That's exactly my point, said Neji. Why do we have to live in fear and obedience of the main family? We shouldn't. It's wrong. Join me. With your help, we can destroy the main family and create a peace for the Hayuga. They all looked at one another. There's no peace in destruction, my boy. One of the members spoke out to him. I know that you're upset about the death of Hisashi, but what you're saying will lead to the death of us all. No, it won't. We have more than double the amount of ninja they have. They may have the seal, but if we strike them when they don't know it. Neji, calm down. Another one said. You're just angry about your father's death. Think about what you're saying. I know what I'm saying, Neji yelled back. Stop being damn cowards. The main branch is evil and they need to be destroyed. We've tolerated them for too long. Please, help me. Help me avenge my father, he said. As Neji looked at them, most of them avoided eye contact. Please, he begged. Help me. But none of them said anything or even moved to help him. As Neji stood there, looking at all of them, that's when he realized he was on his own and no one would help him. Pure hatred was in his eyes, but not just from the main family though, for all of them. Very well. My family, you all. You've all betrayed me. You've betrayed my father and I will never forgive any of you for it. The day will come when each and every one of you will regret not joining me. I swear this on my life. The day will come and you all, you all will regret this. You all will regret not joining me. I swear it. You all will regret it. The day will come, he said, as he walked out rage in his eyes. But guys, be in subscribe right here. If you want to see next person do, like, subscribe, comment down below and turn on that bell notification they posted. Bye, I'm off and I'll see you guys soon. Peace, guys.